The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, and welcome. We're going to get started here in about two minutes. We're waiting for a few more people to log in. All right, we're about ready to get started. Maybe about 30 more seconds. Hope everyone's doing well, staying healthy. It's a rainy day in Washington, D.C. which is where I am. I probably should have said that. That's where I am. <laughs> okay, it's um, five after. Let's uh, go ahead and get started. So hello, I'm Michelle Blackston, Senior Director of Communications and Marketing for NFRC. Uh, before joining NFRC, I worked in media and public relations for more than 20 years. Uh, where I started out in newspapers pre-social media days. So obviously since then, the news and media industry has dramatically changed. You no longer need a reporter to tell your story. With the advent of social media, you create, disseminate, and promote your message and brand, as well as that of your organization, unfiltered. So today, we're gonna learn how to build an online network to do just that, to promote your message and your brand. We'll discuss the various online platforms and their target, target audiences. We'll also highlight why social networking matters to you and your company. We'll share some online networking goals, and then we'll give you the tools to create and cultivate your own online network. We uh, will go through the presentation in its entirety first, and then we'll open it up for questions after the presentation through the GoToWebinar control panel. So before we begin, let's go through a few housekeeping issues. Um, the GoToWebinar platform has uh, the capability to adjust your slide bar up and down, that's on the top. So if you want to increase the size of the presentation, you slide the bar up. If you want to increase the presenter's face, mine, you can slide it down. You can also minimize and maximize your views. And then you can also use the, um, the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen to put in questions and to chat. So um, should you have any questions, use that control panel, and then we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Okay, all right, so before we begin, let's see how well you know social media. Take a look at the first logo the one on the um, left-hand side, the top one, and tell me if you can name it. We're gonna do a poll. All right, just a few more. Looks like half of you have voted. About five more seconds. Okay, 60% of you have voted. Okay, all right. So it's Facebook. Yay, all right, everybody got that. Of course, it's ubiquitous. Everybody's on Facebook, right? I think 
my 80 year old grandmother's on Facebook. So everybody's on Facebook. Okay, second one. Maybe you know it, maybe you're familiar with it. Take a look, what's the second social media icon? We're gonna take a poll and see how well the audience knows that. All right. Seems like people know what that one is. Okay, about five more seconds. Okay, all right, it's Twitter. All right, 80% of you knew getting it right. Good job. Okay, last but not least, let's see, take a look at that third logo. What social media platform is that? Yeah, this is a no brainer, right? Anyone who's ever looked for a job knows this one. <laughs> All right, five more seconds. All right, obviously LinkedIn, ding, ding, ding. Everybody got that one right, good job. Okay, so this is great. Uh, there are other social media platforms that are on there as well, but for the purposes of the discussion today, we're gonna discuss the most widely used platforms. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then the bottom one on the left is YouTube. All right, so Facebook we know is the most widely used social network um, on, the, on the face of the earth, as a matter of fact, 2.6 billion people globally. Um, YouTube is the only other network that can compete with, um, with Facebook, and 73% of adults say that they have used the video sharing site. Um, other online platforms, most notably Instagram, which is the one right next to uh, YouTube, and then Snapchat, which we don't have an image, they have especially strong following among young people. And then, so let's take a look at this other little one here that maybe you might not know what it is, the, um, the one next to the uh, Snapchat or the Instagram is TikTok. So TikTok has seemingly exploded from nowhere to become one of the most downloaded apps in the world. There are more than 800 million TikTok users. And if you have teens or tweens in your house, which I do, then I'm sure you're very familiar with TikTok. It's a video sharing site with uh, people lip syncing. They're usually 15 seconds long. Anyway, uh, that target audience is the 13 to 24 year olds. Okay, so that's just a sampling. So before we begin, um, you should know and review your social, your company social media policy. If there isn't one, isn't one, then we encourage you to use NFRC's social media policy as a basis for developing one. It's very important that you know the policies around social media use within your organization. Uh, some other tips, first and foremost, act responsibly. When you're engaging in an online network, you should use common sense. Uh, the recommendation is don't post anything inflammatory or personally attacking. Stay away from political hot button issues. Uh, there is a line that shouldn't be crossed. And you also, you represent your company online. If your online profile says you work for an organization, people will look to you to, um, when, they want some, when they wanna know something about that organization. So make sure you uphold the brand. And then lastly, the rule of thumb, if you wouldn't say it in person or to someone say at a conference or at a trade show, then maybe you should think twice before posting it. Now we're gonna show you some examples of perhaps when organizations didn't think twice before posting something. So uh, during Hurricane Sandy in 2012, the gap, issued this tweet saying, oh, now is the perfect time for online shopping. Uh, it appeared a little insensitive because the number of people who were displaced and without power during and after the storm. 
So this is key because companies might want to show their support of others or for others during national events or even tragedies. They can come off as opportunistic, as if they are promoting a product or as a money maker during a sensitive time. You know, the takeaway is to be sensitive to the situation and not tone deaf as this tweet appeared. And then we'll look at another one. So this tweet from Chase Bank was especially troubling. You know, and there's something inherently bad about a bank berating people for their financial instability, particularly a bank that received a bailout from US taxpayers during the 2008 financial crisis. When Chase implied that certain customers have a low balance because of their own bad spending habit, habits, the backlash was swift and justified and the company ended up taking the tweet down. So here again, going back to that rule of using common sense and don't put yourself or your company in a position where you have to walk back what you said online. And so with that in mind, let's look at who is in the fenestration, who in the fenestration industry has an online network and how are they using it? So here are some examples. Uh, this is NFRC's um, Twitter page our Twitter profile, you can see we have the number of followers, we have a profile, photo, um, photos as a matter of fact are more, profiles that have photos are more likely to be engaged and liked than profiles that don't have photos. So that's a key thing. Make sure you have some kind of images or graphics on your online presence. Okay, well and then here's me. So my Twitter profile is personal, it puts uh, that I am a comms director, but it also has some of my interests in it. it it's, it's personal and professional, but the key is I have a disclaimer. Tweets are my own. So when I put something out there, that's reflective of me and not necessarily of the organization. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to be tweeting things that are insensitive. That's not who I am, but at the end of the day, someone who's looking at my profile knows specifically that what's on Twitter is of me as a person and my opinions. Um, it's really important to know who's online and to follow them. So let's look at some of the other folks in the fenestration industry. So here's Janice Iglesias of FGIA. Her Twitter profile is 100% professional. It's focused on her organization. She lists her title. She has logos from the, from the organization. Um, she also has in her bio what she does. So this is, you would not expect to see something personal from Janice tweeted out or shared out on this network. But there are others who find a balance. So Angela Dixon, also with FGIA, she has a nice mix of professional and personal. You see she has in there marketing um, maverick. And then she also has in there that she's a wife and a mom. So her tweets are both gonna be personal and professional. And then let's see, who else do we have on here? So ASTM, this is their company site, their company's Twitter handle. And look, they have 14,000 followers. So they're reaching a really large audience. And chances are they're posting things related to the industry, uh, current events, things that are happening within their organization. And then here we have one from uh, a manufacturer and you'll see the use of photos. So no matter what you're looking for, replacement windows, housing, it, it shows the whole gamut. And then they have their logo. So as soon as you go to that Twitter profile, you see their logo, it's part of their brand. And then they also have a write-up in their profile that shows that you know their, their marketing slogan is in there. Um, and that way they're carrying the same theme and message from their website, from their printed glossies to their Twitter profile. There's a consistent company brand that is apparent through all of their uh, social networks. And then here's some uh, fenestration industry um, uh, LinkedIn profiles. And see, this is very focused on employees. They want to show what their employees look like and, and that, um, you know, if you want more information about what, their, what jobs they're offering. And this is really a way to promote your corporate culture. And this is through LinkedIn. And then, um, and then here's another one, NREL. So even the government and different agencies and divisions within the federal government 
are recognizing the value of having social networking presence. And so NREL, uh, they will show you their plant. They'll also probably post um, long form pieces on what they're doing and perhaps sharing some of their research. And then again, the same sort of brand is flowing from their website to their social media um, platforms. All right, let's talk a little bit about why social networking matters for you. So consider there are more than 3 billion people using social networks across the globe. They're connecting with one another, they're engaging with news content, they're sharing entertain or sharing uh, information, and they're entertaining themselves. When the Pew Research Center began tracking social media back in 2005, there was only 5% of American adults on one of these social media platforms. By 2011, that had risen to half of all Americans. And today, a whopping 72% of the public uses some type of social media. And so this is an audience that you definitely have to be engaging with. Building an online network enables you and your company to plan content together. You can repurpose it in different formats. You can cross link and curate and highlight it. Social networks allow you and your company to have a robust strategy to reach this large audience and create a network of like-minded individuals. So think of it as a single organization with a whole suite of offerings and that those should align with your company's strategic goals and translate into a set of messages that you can get out on different channels. And that's important for you to think about that too when you're promoting your own brand. Um, let's look at this next graphic on who uses social media. So obviously social media is really popular among young adults, but as more Americans have adopted social media, the user base has grown more representative of the broader population. You can see that older Americans use of social media has increased in recent years and uh, the numbers of uh, keep growing. And whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or even um, Instagram and, and TikTok, the usage is increasing year over year among the general population. And then here's a breakdown too, where you can see that um, the population as a whole, and it breaks down the percentages. So even though young people, this 18 to 29 demographic, they're off the charts in using social media, Let's look at some of the other demographics, the 50 to 64 year olds. They're still over half of the population is engaging in social media and same thing with 30 to 49 year olds. So whether that's Gen X and boomers um, and then even Generation Z, they're all engaging in social media. And why this is important is because this is this should be your target audience. Uh, it's, it's a broad representation of who could potentially be customers. And it's also a way for you to uh, bring like-minded individuals who are concerned about industry issues, bring them to your sites and bring them to the content that you're, um, that you're putting out there. And then lastly, social media network users, they spend on average three hours a day, three hours a day on some sort of uh, social media or direct messaging, things like that. So, um, I mean, think about your own social networking habits. How often are you on LinkedIn taking a look at something or Facebook um, getting updates or even on Twitter? And the pandemic, the fact that we're all staying home is only increasing the amount of time that we will spend on social networks. Okay, so with that, let's talk about the value of online networking. So social networking gives people an opportunity to meet new people around the world. Users of these sites have access to millions of profiles from around the world, and they're free to use. There's no charge to be involved in any of these networks. These groups allow like-minded people to share their interests and their professions. Another important reason for the success of social networking is that it helps businesses reach potential customers, stakeholders, and supporters. They encourage users to engage, to commit, to comment, and to take action on issues that are important to them. I mean, think about the times that you retweeted something or shared something on Facebook and had a comment because it's important to you, you're passionate about it, or you just want your friends and followers to know this is what you're reading, or maybe it's a pledge you want them to take to raise money for a certain cause that you're passionate about. 
Social networks have the unique access uh, to people's personal information. Um, think about that. When you go on online, you look at what people have done, what trips they've taken, what their hobbies are, um, places they visited. All of this helps business businesses target their advertising. The internet has opened up communications across the boundaries of the world. And social networking has helped people expand their network. They add friends, they enhance their careers, make connections, you can even recruit employees. Um, and then you find people who are relevant to your industry and your interests. So that's the true value of online networking. Another thing too is employers recognize the value of online networking and engaging employees in posting about employers helps build authenticity and trust. Employers know that employees make a positive impact on their brand when they post on their online network. And another thing, if you're seen promoting the company you work for, you show the benefit to a future employer. You build your own professional network for future employers with others with similar interests. Let's talk about some goals, right? The goals of building an online network. So essentially, we want people to know about you and your company. Then we want them to engage with that content, read it, share it, pledge something, maybe retweet it. And then we want them to take an action by maybe going to your page, your website, maybe following you or reaching out via email to make a connection. This is the model, awareness, engagement, and then action. And the key here is this should be aligned with your company's goals and strategic plan. It's a way of you to connect with the most important influencers in your industry and to help you grow your company and to grow your brand. So the three goals, right? awareness, engagement, and then action. And I'll talk a little bit more about those, putting them into practice. So let's take a look at NFRC's social media networking presence. All of this here expands our sphere of influence in the fenestration industry and raises the visibility of NFRC in the marketplace. So media, so we've had articles in the Washington Post, we've had articles in these industry trade pubs, and oftentimes, those articles are a result of something we've put online. Maybe we posted something on Facebook or we tweeted something out. And because those reporters are in that environment, they're on that platform, they'll see those things. I've talked to reporters who will go actively looking on Twitter for comments on things. And then maybe they'll do a DM, a direct message to you, and that facilitates a conversation and a connection. And then from there, it also increases your company brand. And here, for example, NFRC's brand with our industry influencers. So then the US GBC knows about us because we put a study up on the energy efficiency of windows, doors, and skylights. Or we'll retweet something that FGIA puts up there, and then they will like that tweet. So that's a connection. All the people on FGIA's page who are looking at that will see NFRC, and all the people on NFRC's site will see that, and that's a connection. So it's, it's all part of uh, expanding our influence um, in this online network and growing that audience that we wanna reach out to. Now I'm gonna give you some reasons as to why. Well, all right, let me show this example, excuse me. What happened here was with the Washington Post article, we had posted something on social media about the ratings and we had a redesign of our um, brochure that we hand out to retailers explaining the label. And we posted that online and this reporter was doing a search on uh, energy efficient windows and he found this and reached out to us and said, hey, I'm writing this article for the Washington Post. Can you get somebody to talk to me about U Factor and about other ratings for uh, somebody who wants to replace the windows in a, in a home that the, is, is dated and old. And so we connected the reporter with Paul Bush, our former board chair, and he was quoted and interviewed by this reporter. And then this actually appeared in the Washington Post. But it didn't end there. Once the article appeared online, we, NFRC, tweeted it out. We posted it on our LinkedIn profile. We put it on our website. 
We also got it up on our Facebook page so that it didn't just end with the Washington Post print edition or online edition. We expanded it from there. And then others who were following us shared it and liked it and provided comments. And then at the same token, Paul Bush, who also has his own online presence, he tweeted it out and posted it on his social network. So you see the reach and the scope and the depth of one piece of content and how far it can go out and branch out and all the people who will see that and get eyes on it and maybe engage with it and then maybe take some kind of action with it uh, versus just being in a print edition of a newspaper. So here are some reasons to build your online network. So online communities are not just a channel for customer support. They are made up of real people making real connections. It's invaluable for brands to humanize themselves enough to engage in this type of relationship building where they build trust over time. And we all know trust creates loyalty. Remember, people don't buy from brands. They buy from people they know and trust. It's important not to get hung up on what platforms and tools you use to build your online community. The platforms and tools are just a means of bringing people together. And if you've done your research about your target audience, then you know you can pinpoint what network they're gonna be on. So for example, your customers or your, the people you're trying to engage with, they might not just be on Facebook or on email. Form a strategy around that, their behavior in order to have the greatest impact. And you should always have that strategy revolve around the people you're trying to connect with. Uh, companies can use that to their advantage by encouraging employees to post. And that will represent the company well. And then in turn, that drives traffic to your website. So leveraging your employees and your colleagues' social networks is much more cost effective than paying directly for ads online. That's a key thing. Here's a formula for building a strong online presence. So you, you're the subject matter expert. You know what you're talking about. You know whether something is valid or not. And this is an opportunity for you to show this. So we're not telling you what your opinion should be. Those are yours. However, when you choose to represent, represent yourself on social media, you should represent yourself as an authority um, and, and comment on industry concerns. Highlight things that are innovative and new that what you're doing or what your company is doing. Uh, it doesn't even have to be uh, content that you generate. Say, for example, there is a new piece of research that has come out that you agree with or is in line with the work that you're doing. Post it, share it, write a comment on it. Uh, be credible. The, the key thing is do it where you're comfortable. If you don't want to mix your personal and your professional um, on Facebook, then don't. Limit perhaps to LinkedIn the things that you're presenting in your professional uh, capacity. Or maybe you tweet it out. You decide where you feel most comfortable sharing things that are related to your work and to your personal life. Uh, the other thing with the engage and, and um, take action, you want to promote events and conferences. Say, for example, you're speaking on a panel at a conference or you're attending a trade show. Highlight that. Put that on there. Use hashtags. If you use a hashtag that you're going to be at an event, then that could drive people to connect with you because perhaps they're also at that event. Uh, make sure what you're sharing, too, is timely and that it adds real value for people. Give them a reason to care and engage. You'd be surprised at how easy it is to connect with someone who you may not even know is looking for the information that you're sharing. And lastly, the formula is be consistent with your outreach. Know what you're going to say and when to say it. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, too, is these are all strategies. These are all tips. We're not guaranteeing that you're going to get 200 followers in a day. We're not going to guarantee that you're going to break the Internet or something's going to go viral. These are all strategies and, and tactics that you can use to grow your network. And we've used them and we've seen success. But try, try it out. And if you aren't successful, then maybe switch networks or maybe try some different content. But the key is to engage and to actually be in this environment. All right, so how do you prepare? How do you get ready for this? 
All right, well, content is king, right? So in this diagram here, you see content in the middle. So work with your company marketing departments. Find out if, say, your communications department is putting out a press release or a blog post, or maybe there's some industry report that's coming out that you think is valuable. Or if you are a prolific writer and you wanna write something about something that you are seeing that's new and innovative, then reach out to your, your company's uh, comms folks and say, hey, I wanna write this blog post, here's what I'm seeing. And then that piece of content then is shared in that network. So what we do at NFRC is we will post something on our website, we'll share it on social media, and then we'll pitch it to reporters. This multi-pronged approach helps us take this piece of content and repurpose it. Um, the other thing too is, hey, NFRC has a lot of information that we are sharing regularly online. Follow us, retweet us, comment, share. That goes a long way to growing your network too, because I don't want you to feel that you have to be the sole source of all this content. Uh, one thing leads to the other, right? If we're sharing and we're connecting, that increases awareness, engagement, and action. I also have an example here that we use with the Efficient Windows Collaborative. So you may be aware that NFRC acquired the Efficient Windows Collaborative earlier this year. So from a marketing and communication standpoint, we wrote a press release, we developed social media posts, we pitched reporters and uh, at industry trade publications, all of which to expand our reach. We, uh, we our message got out there about the uh, the newly uh, formed um, organization, and you can see here this is what we put up on Twitter, and then um, from there we uh, wrote a, a blog post, and that got up there, and we sent it out to reporters and to people in our own network, which we have their emails. And we use the two the two logos to show that the two were coming together. And then from there, that resulted in an article here uh, that uh, with an industry trade pub from the pitching and from the social media, they saw all of that. And so from there, we didn't just let it sit as an article. We then reshared that on our social media. So it's twofold. We sent it out to them. They ran it. And then we shared it with them because you're also doing that reporter a favor and you're doing that publication a favor because you're raising the visibility of the publication. And so again, it's this whole multi-pronged approach of one thing leading to the next with this whole idea of, of engaging and um, awareness, engagement, and action. Okay, here is what we like to call an influencer map. You are the influencer. You are in the middle, so uh, you can write your name there <laughs> and map it out. What do you read every day? What websites do you visit? What news do you watch? Uh, what organizations do you belong to? Um, does your college have an alumni association? What personal interactions do you make? All of this is your circle of influence, and all of this are potential points of content, contact. These are opportunities for you to grow your own brand and that of your company. Uh, whether or not they're in the fenestration industry, doesn't matter. These are people who may not know about you, may not know what you do, but if you're connecting with them, say you're uh, going to an event and it's back in the day when we were at face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, you give someone your card, you meet them, you chat a little bit, maybe that's the end of that connection, no longer. Now you can look that person up on LinkedIn, you can connect with them. How many times have you been at, say, your kid's soccer game and you're talking to somebody and you'll say, hey, oh, I read this really great article on. And then you go online on Facebook, you find that person who you spoke with and you send them that article. That's building an online network. So this is an opportunity for you, for people who may not even know about fenestration or about windows, doors, and skylights, you can be intentional with those connections. Instead of it being uh, just a business card exchange or a conversation, if you know your circle of influence, you can engage with them online to grow your own brand and grow your company. And if you create this map on a piece of paper, you will see all the connections that you have and it shows your influence in the marketplace. <laughs> Think of it as six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Uh, we're going to show you some examples. So um, 
we've got Daniel here. He is an NFRC board member. He's an architect and engineer. And when, let's look at his circle of influence. So his organization where he works is uh, based on green technology and energy efficiency. So he's been quoted in some of these green building and design magazines. His, um, he has expertise uh, from being an architect. And so he can engage with, um, or he has submitted articles to the School of Architect and Planning. They're posted on his website. And so from there, it then gets tweeted out and shared out at other, on other social media platforms. And then if you look at his social, his um, employer has a very active Twitter account that he tweets from. He also belongs to the USGBC Facebook group which has a large following. There are some 13,000 members there. And Daniel is an active participant with the organization. He writes things on the page. And so he's engaging with those people. And then lastly, his um, circle of influence, he um, you know, belongs to the Association of Architecture Organizations. They have conferences and events. They also have newsletters. So he's engaged there as well. Even if they're posting something on LinkedIn, he could then comment or, or highlight, I'm attending this, I look forward to networking with you and meeting you there. So all of this is without, without a doubt, the, the way that he's making connections, just based on his circle of influence and, and the people that he knows. Okay, and then let's look at the next one. It's Kevin here, who uh, is a, an engineer and he is, uh, he works for um, a window group at Katera, and he has a manufacturer's perspective. He can also talk to, say, Window and Door ma and Glass Magazine. He can uh, talk about some of the things that are happening in manufacturing. But the other thing here that's interesting is Kevin is a Stanford alumni. So he has extensive experience that he could share with that um, magazine. He could uh, write an article and say, hey, this is what I'm doing in fenestration, it's energy efficiency, and talk about being a Stanford alum and how his experience at Stanford shaped who he is and his career today. So that's a network that is completely, you know, not even involved with fenestration, but could then be exposed to that. And then all of the people who get that magazine will read about that. And then the same thing with social. So he belongs to, um, a couple of uh, uh, LinkedIn groups, window and door manufacturing professionals, um, Green Build. Everyone should be involved with Green Build on LinkedIn. And he's also a board member at NFRC. So he brings that perspective, his manufacturer's perspective, uh, to the board, or he was once a board member. Um, and then if you look at his uh, circle of influence, Stanford alumni, there it is again. They have a huge following and there are countless networking opportunities. And then again, where he goes out and meets people and gets cards and exchanges um, email addresses, it's another way for you to connect with those people online, even though you've met them in a face-to-face -face environment. So these are just a few examples of uh, folks who are actively involved with NFRC, and they perhaps didn't even know that their circle of influence was as large as it is. So now we're going to talk about NFRC strategy. So LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn is um, 14 times more likely to share content from their employers um, on LinkedIn. There are 30 million companies. Uh, we want our members to be part of this online network. This is where industry is, uh, in, industry information is being shared. There's actually groups. There's a fenestration forum group that has almost 3,000 members on it. LinkedIn is the number one channel for marketers to distribute content. And what does that content look like? Well, sometimes it's long form, meaning articles that are 400 to 700 words, those types of things get the most shares, but it's not limited to just content. Graphics, charts, industry data all do really well on LinkedIn. Okay, and then moving on to Facebook. So the strategy for Facebook, this is your largest consumer audience, right? Your target audience are consumers. But the key with Facebook is consistency and daily, if possible. NFRC goals are to educate and empower consumers. So we are regularly engaging and talking with our community on Facebook. 
so we can build again that strong relationship of trust and loyalty uh, images and videos also work really well on facebook's news feed it makes it really easy to engage with and then if you put a video there you can embed it but you can also add a link that could drive traffic to your website uh, you also can share your uh your colleagues posts so if you're on facebook and you have colleagues who are posting like uh like-minded things you can share and cross promote as well on facebook all right now moving on to twitter so there are half a billion tweets that are sent each day probably more now that people are at home 71 percent of users on twitter this is key are reading news on twitter so this strategy is to retweet and engage with industry influencers. So whenever there's an article that's posted on Fenestration or NFRC, you can bet we are retweeting it, adding a comment, using hashtags, linking back to pages on our website so that it's this concerted effort to continue the news and information on Twitter. Photos also work well on Twitter. Uh, and it's, it's obviously a, a shorter uh, platform. It's 280 characters. But that doesn't mean you can't provide a concise, direct message. And then again, going back to using appropriate hashtags. Uh, the other key thing is uh, we have a stat, 85% of users believe that providing customer service on Twitter is important. So if somebody tags your company or tags you in a tweet and they're asking a question, answer it. Take a look at it. If it's something that's valuable or relevant to what your organization is doing, maybe you want to retweet it. Obviously, be judicious with that and make sure that you know uh, the person and where they're coming from, because we also know there are some people who could say some inflammatory things. Uh, but Twitter, for their um, corporate strategy, they're doing better at uh, taking those things down. And then lastly, NFRC's YouTube. So YouTube is the most successful channel to get video out there. And their key also is consistency. So how often are videos posted? Well, big brands like The Gap and some of these other big brands are posting videos every couple of days or even every day. Now, is that the reality that we're gonna be creating videos every day? Probably not. However, that doesn't mean you can't share videos from other organizations that you're involved in. Um, you can still build a community around the videos that you have and build a strategy so that way you're driving people to your YouTube channel from other social media channels or putting it up on your website or putting the a video uh, link in an email that you send out to customers or stakeholders. All of this is building a community. You're encouraging them to take action. Um, you can also help your video rank by uh, using search engine optimization, by writing keywords in the video that will make it uh, more relevant when people are searching. Again, awareness, engagement, and then action. Those are all the key things for building your online network. All right, so where's NFRC? Here's our networks. Here we are, here's some screenshots of where you can find NFRC. All right, so this is our LinkedIn profile. Here's our Facebook page. You can see we use images. Uh, we show the label because that's you know what NFRC is known for. Um, here are some graphic elements that we use, some things that uh, people can retweet and share, uh, especially with videos in that right rail so people can engage with that content. Um, here is NFRC's YouTube channel. We have videos that we post up there. Um, but all of the branding is consistent throughout. Uh, here's NFRC's blog. Maybe you didn't know we had a blog. And if you see, there are widgets in our blog, so that way you can then share it. A widget is a little button that you can click that will then send it to that specific network. So familiarize yourself with these online networks and start sharing and start engaging. Um, also, if you um, if you need help, reach out to us. Uh, reach out to your comms and marketing team for assistance. Uh, really, the, the key is to start and being engaged. 
um, to continue this discussion, NFRC is offering a couple of other opportunities. We're providing a webinar on being a brand ambassador that really takes the online networking a step further and gives you some real uh, valuable tools to create and shape your online brand and your company brand. We also have um, a Leaders Network podcast series that we're debuting in July that are interviews with uh, some industry experts on their leadership journey through the fenestration industry. And we're pleased to announce that we're starting a Marcom network, a marketing and communications network. We're gonna have quarterly meetings and the first one is scheduled for October 1st. And that's open to all members and um, employees who wanna get involved. So the, the key thing is let's work together. Let's share each other's content. Uh, we're happy to help get you started. NFRC has uh, templates for um, articles. We have sample tweets. We have sample press releases. Uh, we also do member profiles, as you can see here. We've done uh, two companies and uh, we can get you information on how your company can be profiled. Uh, we also want to, to know what you need from us. We're here to help. So we hope you continue to be involved and engaged. And before we open it up for Q&A, we have one final question, a poll, that would you be interested in online networking events? Because we're operating in a virtual environment, we wanna see if you would be interested in taking it to the next level and everybody getting online to get together in a networking, say for example, a virtual happy hour. Would that be something you would be interested in? Looks like half of you have voted. Okay. All right, well, thank you again for joining this webinar and for participating. Um, we appreciate any and all questions. So we're gonna open it up now. So use your uh, toolbox in the right uh, hand side of your screen, if that's where it is, it's the, the GoToWebinar toolbox, and you can write a question there and we will start answering them. Michelle, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, but I'll give it another couple of okay. seconds, couple, couple seconds. Um, it, it also looks like the poll might not be working for everybody. So if you oh, weren't okay. able to answer in that last poll, feel free to either put your answer in the questions or you can email them if you want to do that too. Great. Okay, great. All right, so it doesn't look like there are any questions, Michelle. Okay, well, hey, again, thank you for participating. We appreciate that you're here. We hope that you learned something and have some takeaways. We are gonna send a follow-up email that will have a link to the presentation. So you can please feel free to share it, pass it around. And we encourage you to attend our Marcom Network um, October 1st. The first uh, meeting that we're going to have, we hope to bring uh, people together to talk about uh, corporate responsibility on social media. That's the topic. And then uh, stay tuned for more information on webinars, on building a brand ambassador, and how you can be engaged. And if you want, please call me, email me. My email address is mblackston at nfrc.org. Happy to chat and help you as you jump into this uh, building your online network. Thanks everyone, stay safe and healthy and have a great rest of your day.